The IRS recently denied tax exempt status to a Texas based Christian nonprofit and said it was disqualified in part because they educate Christians on what the Bible says in areas they can be instrumental, including the areas of the sanctity of life, the definition of marriage, biblical justice, freedom of speech, defense, and the border and immigration, U.S. and Israel relations. And they went on to say, the IRS went on to say, that those Bible teachings are, quote, typically affiliated with the Republican Party, end quote. Well, whose fault is that? that the Democrats don't want to take up these issues. Joining me now to talk about this is Justin Butterfield, Deputy General Counsel at First Liberty Institute, which is representing this nonprofit. Justin, welcome to Washington Watch. Well, thank you for having me. Justin, can you tell us more about this nonprofit in this case that you have uh, taken up at First Liberty? Absolutely. So First Liberty Institute represents Christians Engaged which is an educational organization that wants to educate and encourage Christians uh, in getting involved in civics, in praying for government, in, in learning how to vote, things like that. And so they have a weekly Bible study, they send out prayer alerts, they organize prayer meetings for government officials in our nation, and uh, they just do things to encourage Christians to get engaged, something that nobody should have a problem with. Well, they sought tax exempt status as a 501c3 from the IRS. And the IRS responded with this bizarre denial letter that uh, made several major mistakes. And they, the IRS said that they were not liable, they were not able to be tax exempt because they did things like taking a position. Well, lots of nonprofit organizations take positions on lots of topics. Uh, they said that Bible teachings, and that was the IRS's words, Bible teachings are affiliated with the Republican Party. Now, Christians Engaged absolutely disagrees with that. They believe the Bible is for everybody, regardless of political affiliation. Um, and the final thing the IRS did that was just absolutely wrong is they, by making these statements, they really violated the First Amendment's free exercise clause, free speech clause, um, and the Establishment Clause. And they were telling Christians Engaged how they should interpret the Bible, something that no government official has a right to do. And so First Liberty Institute came alongside and said, no, this is not how the IRS should treat uh, organizations like Christians Engaged. And we, we, are, we responded to that letter. We're seeking to have the IRS reverse that determination. But if you think about it, what the IRS told Christians Engaged, that Bible teachings are Republican policy positions, and that by holding to Bible, the Bibles as, as the inerrant word of God, what the IRS referred to as the inerrant M, because they wouldn't even put the word of God as, a, as an unabbreviated phrase in their letter, the inerrant M, the inerrant word of God, that that is somehow problematic for tax exempt status, that would threaten the tax exempt status, not only of Christians engaged, but of thousands and thousands of religious organizations, churches, places of worship around the country because they hold to the Bible or, or other similar works as, as being important and taking stands on those positions. Well, I would have to ask the question, Justin, can the, should the IRS penalize this nonprofit because the Democratic Party is not affiliated with these issues? That's their choice. The Democratic Party doesn't have to take up these issues and have a biblical view or have Bible studies. That's their choice. But simply because the Republican Party has a platform that is reflective of biblical truth, why should a group that is aligned with those same issues be penalized? That, that's absolutely right. They, they shouldn't be. And, you know, Christians Engaged is a nonpartisan organization. They believe and they want people of all political affiliations to, to read the Bible, to study scripture, and to, to learn how they can apply the Bible in their lives. So they do not agree that, that the Bible only speaks to Republicans. And, and the IRS's statement that because Bible teachings, as they put it, are affiliated with the Republican Party, that, that organizations that hold to the Bible are somehow no longer able to be tax exempt, that's completely wrong. And that's not what the I mean, law says. I mean, Justin, this looks like outright hostility from the IRS toward biblically based and biblically centered organizations. It, it absolutely is. It's, you know, it's cancel culture come to the IRS. And unfortunately, the IRS seems to have a history of going after organizations that the, the individual IRS agents who are, are reviewing their, their tax exempt requests 
uh, dislike, um, they, they have a history of going after those organizations. And unfortunately, this seems to be another in that chain. Uh, we're certainly hopeful that the IRS will do the right thing, that they will reverse this decision and recognize that religious organizations should not be denied tax exempt status just because they hold to biblical teachings. Uh, but unfortunately, that's where we're at right now. Justin Butterfield, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, appreciate all the great work that F First Liberty does on behalf of religious freedom in our country. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me.